welcome to another episode of the South in Preview. And of course, we're looking at the games uh, for this weekend. And let's hope we have a bit more success than we have done for the last two weekends with the games that we featured here today. And of course, the, the games in the league itself. So let's just hope that we do have a bit more success. And we've got some interviews coming up as well uh, for you. Uh, we've got uh, interviews with the managers uh, at Wimborne, um, at Tim, and of course, also the manager at uh, Tavistock in Stu. And of course, we will also have an interview with Paul, the manager at Truro, as he goes to take on Western Supermare this weekend, first versus second there in the Premier South. But first, we'll go to the uh, fixtures as we normally do, and we'll start off with the Premier Central. And it's AFC Rushton and Diamonds who are in 22nd. They take on 20th place Stratford Town. Last time they played each other uh, at Rushton Diamonds, it was 3 1 to the away side Stratford Town. And that's going to be played at the Hayden Road Sports Ground. Uh, Bashford United, they're in 10th. They take on top of the table, Tamworth. Of course, that's going to be played at Mill Street Playing Fields. Uh, Hensford Town, they're in 21st. They take on 19th place, Alba Church. Uh, and that will be played at Keys Park. The last time they played each other at Keys Park, Alba Church came away with a 4-1 victory. Uh, Hitchin Town, they put in, they're now in 6th. They take on 16th place, Bedford Town at top field. Uh, Ilkinston Town, they're in 7th. They take on 5th place, Colville Town at the new Manor Ground. And of course, they've played each other twice this season uh, already. Um, and the games have finished 4-1 to the, uh, well, to each. 4-1 to Ilkeston, 4-1 to Colville. One, of course, those was in the FA Cup. Uh, Kings Langley, they're in 18th. They take on 17th place, Barwell. Uh, that game is going to be played at Gaywood Park. And, of course, the last time they played each other at uh, Kings Langley, it finished uh, a goal apiece. Uh, Mikelova, they're playing ninth. They're playing third place, Rush Russia Olympic. Of course, they're on a great run at the moment. They that's, of course, at the Mikelova Sports Ground. Uh, Nuneaton Borough, they're in second. They take on 12th place, Stourbridge, at the LDJ Solicitor Stadium. And, of course, Nicolo, uh, sorry, uh, Nuneaton Borough, they'll be looking for a better result than the last time they played each other at the Solicitor Stadium when it finished a goal apiece. Uh, Redditch United, they're in eighth. They're taking on 14th place Bromsgrove Sporting uh, at the Trico Stadium. And then last time, of course, that was also a 1-1 draw when they played at Redditch. And that was a 1-1 draw, as I said. Uh, Royston Town, they're in 11th. They're taking on 15th place at Needham Market at Garden Walk. And the last time they took each other on at Garden Walk, it finished three goals apiece. Uh, then we move on to the Premier South. Uh, and it's uh, Beaconsfield Town, uh, sorry, Beaconsfield Town in 10th. They take on third place, uh, Chesham United at Holly, Hollyways Park. Uh, and the last time they played there, of course, last season, it finished 2-2. Uh, Bracknell Town, they're in 7th. They're taking on 17th place, Winchester City. Uh, Dorchester Town in 5th. They take on 11th place, Swindon Supermarine at the Green King Community Stadium. The last time they played there last year, it was a 2-1 home win to Dorchester Town. Uh, Gosport Borough, they're in 16th. They play in on ninth place, Hayes and Yedding United at Privet Park. Last time they played there last year, it was a 1-0 win to Hayes and Yedding. Hendon in 19th, they play on locals, localish rivals, Harrow Borough in 18th at Silver Jubilee Park. The last time they took on each other, Hendon came away with the victory by a goal to nil. Murphy Town, who are on a great run at the moment, they're in 8th. They're taking on 12th place, Salisbury. Last time they played each other at the uh, Loadlock Community Stadium, it finished 5-0 to Murphy, and I think they'll be happy with that if they can come away again with a 5-0 home win. Uh, Metropolitan Police, they're in six. They're taking on 13th place, Hamwell Town. Uh, that, of course, at Imbercourt. Uh, North Lee in 22nd. They're taking on 20th place, uh, Hartley Whitney, at, uh, at the Esham, Park, uh, sorry, Esham Hall Park Sports Ground. Plymouth Parkway in 21st. They're taking on fourth place, Paul Town. Western Supermare in one of our games of the week. They're in first. They're taking on second place, Truro City, the Optima Stadium. Last time they played each other, it finished 2-2 at the Optima Stadium. And I think Truro will be hoping uh, after the long journey that they'll come away with more than a point this time. Uh, Yate Town in 15th. They take on Tiverton Town in 14th at the Jeff uh, Jelf Stadium. Like they've played each other again twice this season already. Two one victories at either team. One in the FA Cup and, of course, one in the league. Uh, we move forward then to the cent Southern Central Division. 
Uh, Alsbury United, they're in 17th. They take on fifth place, Siren Sester Town, who have come up like a, well, like a shot from where they were now into fifth place in the league at the Meadow. Barton Rovers are in 19th. They take on Biggleswade Town in 13th at Luton Road. Biggleswade in second. They take on ninth place, Welling Garden City. Uh, last time they played each other, Biggleswade came away with the 2-1 win. Uh, Hadley in 12th. They take on the runaway leaders at the moment, Burke Hampstead. Uh, Highworth, Highworth Town in 16th place, 7th place, uh, Kidlington. Uh, Kempston Rovers, they're in 10th. They take on 6th place, AFC Dunstable at Hill Ground Stadium. Last time they played there, of course, Dunstable came away with the points in a 2-1 victory. Tame United, they're in 15th. They're taking on 4th place, Didcot Town at the Meadowview Park. And of course, last time they played at Meadowview Park, it was a 1-1 draw. Wolfram Abbey at Cabershots, they're in 8th. They take on 14th place and local rivals, uh, Hartford Town. And they'll, they'll be hoping for the same result as last time when the Abbey came away with a 3-0 win. And of course, Wolfram Stowe in 11th. They take on 18th place, FC Romania. And of course, the odd team this week, of course, is where, because that would have been the game against Harlow Town. Uh, and in, in the Premier South, it is Bashley, they're in 11th. They're taking on 14th place, uh, Melshcombe Town at the Recreation Ground. Uh, Bidford Town is 17th. They're taking on Slimbridge in 19th at the Sports Ground. And of course, the last time they played each other last season at the Sports Ground, it was a 2 0 win uh, for Bidford Town. I'd say for Bidford. Uh, Bristol Manor Farm, and they're in 20th. They're taking on 13th place, Willan Rovers at the Creek. Uh, last time at the Creek, it was a 2 0 win for Bristol Manor Farm. And I think they'll be happy with that to try and get the points to get them out of that uh, sticky situation they're in uh, this season. Exmouth Town in sixth. They take on 10th place, Froome Town. Uh, Hamworth United, they're in third. They're taking on 15th place, Lark Hall Athletic. Limington Town in 18th, they're taking an 11th, uh, sorry, first place, Sholing. Last time they played each other there, Sholing came away with a 5-2 win. Paulton Rovers in 8th, they're taking on 5th place, Evesham United at the Athletic Ground. Last time it was a victory for Evesham by two goals to one when they went to at the Athletic Ground. Westbury United, they're in 9th, they're taking on 2nd place, AFC Totten. Uh, Wimborne Town in fourth. They're taking on the seventh play for Tavistock at the W Plus S Stadium. And of course, that is one of our games of the week this week. And then on Friday night, we've got uh, Bishop's Cleve. They're in 12th. They're taking on 16th place, Cinderford Town. That's a 7.45 kickoff uh, at uh, Katie Lane. So make sure that uh, you go down there on Friday night. If you want your Friday night football, down to Bishop's Cleve as they take on Cinderford on Friday night. And of course, uh, don't forget that uh, we've now got our uh, interviews coming up. I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope you're enjoying the interviews and getting a little bit of a lowdown from some of the managers and coaches of the teams that are playing at the weekend. This week, it's Wimbledon Town's uh, Tim. Uh, he will be talking to us. And of course, first of all, we start off with uh, Tavistock and Stu. And then, of course, after that, we will be listening to Paul uh, from Truro talking about their big game going down to Western Supermare. But uh, enjoy the interviews. Hopefully you enjoy them and uh, we'll see you soon. Well, welcome, of course, uh, and to, to our guest today, of course, on the Southern League uh, preview show. And of course, uh, Stu, the manager from uh, Tavistock, is joining us. And uh, in his busy schedule, as you can see, in his car, he's in a real busy schedule. But he's taking the time out just to have a quick chat with us today about the game against uh, Wimborne at the weekend. And uh, Stu, I mean, looking forward to that game at the weekend? Yeah, always looking, always look forward to a Saturday. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough, a tough ask going up there to try and get something there. They're flying, but you know, as always, we we'll look forward to it. I mean, you know, a good win for you and results going the right way at the weekend. You could see you, you know, going into the into those sort of playoff positions. We lost at the weekend. <laughs> we lost <laughs> at the weekend two one. Um, but yeah, I mean, for a club like us, it, it's first season at this level and certainly not the biggest of clubs it, it's just trying to sort of like be sustainable but you know we feel that um you know we we've been apart from sort of like totten and when we went up to hanworth a bit under strength i think every other game we've played has been tight um and you've only got to look at the, the you know the results you know top can beat bottom and 
yeah, there's no sort of like give me's in this sort of like leagues. So it is really tight. Um, Wimbledon are flying, and you know, I've been led to believe the facilities are outstanding up there. So you now our boys, our boys are really enjoy it. Like, you know, they love going to places like Melksham and Totten, despite the scoreline, and um, you know, trying to be competitive at this level. And is is this weather a, a bit of a nightmare for you, even sort of training wise? I mean, is that going to put a span in the works for the weekend? If do you think the weather's going to maybe get a little bit better for the weekend, or you know, or what are you expecting from from that? Are you still expecting to get the game on at the weekend? Yeah, well, we hope so. I mean, I don't, you know, we we were due to have a game tonight in the Devon Bowl, but it looks like it's going to be sort of like postponed twenty four hours, and tomorrow is meant to be slightly warmer. I've just spoke to their gaffer and. You know, he's saying like 90% of the pitch is fine, but there's a little area that's frozen and, you know, it's not getting any sunlight on it and it's unlikely to pour out. So, you know, it's looking like it'll hopefully be played tomorrow. So um, if that's the case, then we won't train before Saturday um, because of obviously the midweek game. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I hope the temperatures will be warmer. The fact that it's, uh, you know, it's a 3 p.m. kickoff as opposed to an evening game's Gives you a bit more of a chance, I believe. Mm. I mean, you played Wimbledon once already, of course, this season at home, and it went down by the odd goal. I mean, did you learn a lot from that game? That you know, you know, from scouting maybe, or having a look at them as well. Have you learned a bit more about them for for the weekend? Um, well, we had, we had a watch for that game, but you know, it, it sometimes all goes out the window really when when the sort of like whistle goes. Um, they were good. They were a good side. You know, um, from what I recall from the game, it was. It was it was one all and um, you know it, it was a, it was a mistake that led to the opportunity but their lads finished it off well and they won the game but it could have easily been a draw on the day um, and you know some of our games have gone like that you know we went up to Malcham, um a couple of weeks ago and you know as seventy five minutes gone I would have um, you know walked out of the ground with a point all day long and you know we snatched a win against the run of play and then. This Saturday, probably the reverse happened to us that, you know, at one all we were knocking on the door to get a winner against Westbury and they've gone up the other end and got a dubious penalty. So that's football for you. It kind of breaks you. It, it kind of ruins your weekend, but you kind of knock yourself, you know, brush yourself down and go again. So, you know, expecting um, a good competitive match. You know, I, I believe they're probably one of the sort of like favourites to do well in this league, along with the likes of Sholin and Totten, you know, we're newcomers to the league, so you know we'll be, you know, massive underdogs. But you know, we, we look forward to it like we do every, every game. No, I mean we're in a, in a manager's sort of side. I mean, if if the game goes ahead for you, as you said in in your cup competition tomorrow night, I mean, ha, where, where's your mind at with that? Do, do you do you go into that with like a you know like a full strength side, knowing that that game's coming Saturday? Do you do you play some of the fringe players and you know maybe some of the players that might be sort of subs before. I mean, where's where's the manager's head when it comes to those sort of games before a big game at the weekend? Yeah, I think from for our point of view that um, the Devon Bowl game is kind of a charity competition in the area where we're based. So it would be very much sort of like um, we've got a development squad, which has got a number of younger lads. So, you know, a number of them would be playing. We've got a few lads they've been on the fringes of our, you know, the first team on the bench and probably not played as much as they like. So, you know, all those lads would start and then obviously the rest would be made up of first team players. But yeah, certainly got one eye on Saturday. Mm. And of course that, that, that game's, uh, you know, after, after Saturday then you sort of, you, you've then got that sort of difficult situation of, uh, I suppose mindset wise, and you've got, it's where you've got to have a sort of a strong mindset, I suppose, as a manager and as a player, because you go from playing sort of, you know, Wimbledon are sitting fourth and in, at the present minute time, you go to play sort of like a, two games on the bounce against, you know, one against Bristol Manor Farm at the bottom and then, of course, uh, Limington in 18th. So how do you sort of, how, how do you sort of make sure that the team's uh, minds are still on the game as such at the same velocity as they would be for, for the game at the weekend? Well, I think, I think you've got, to, you've just got to treat every game the same. Um, you know, basically, there's three, three points up for grabs you know, every game, you know, it's one point for every game that you draw and no points for every game you lose. And that sounds very basic, but that's the cold facts. Um, you know, we played Leamington, we went up there on a Tuesday night and, you know, they were bottom of the league and 
we were on a good run but for for half an hour they were outstanding um you know the game was a bizarre game because they flooded so many men forward and i think the, the game ended up 7-3 to ourselves and um you know bristol manor farm you know they recently beat axmouth and axmouth were in the playoffs so um you know and bristol manor farm were in the playoffs themselves last season so you know they've got a good you know they might not be doing as well as they would like but you know clearly they've got a nucleus of a squad that did well last season so you know there's no easy games and uh, you know we're sat in sixth seventh whatever we're at but we you know as much as we would like to be in the playoffs for us as a club it's more about surviving in this league um you know whereas maybe a club like Wimborne, Totten, Shisholins have got aspirations to go in the next league above I'm not saying we haven't got those aspirations of you know contending for a playoff position but you know ultimately it is about surviving in this league because it is a big jump from the league we were in to this league not just on the playing side but the expense um, you know the kind of um, the, the commitment the extra travelling stuff like that that um, um that we've had to do being in this league, which is a, a big step up from last season. Mm. So when does the, if, if you know, no disrespect, see the weekend games go, games go the right way. You could, you know, jump into that last playoff place and, you know, and maybe one of your local rivals in Eastham United drop out of it. And um, I mean, it, when does the mindset, if you stay sort of like full fifth, full fifth, full fifth, and, and you're getting up towards Easter time, I mean, when does the, when do you sort of start thinking to yourself, oh, hang on a minute, we are going to survive and it, there's a chance here that we could be going straight up again because we could reach the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the club, the chairman and the committee would have something to say about that because, you know, for those clubs that do jump again, you know, where we're based, you know, we'll be on a bus at eight o'clock in the morning, <laughs> yeah. eight, eight in the morning on Saturday. So, you know, every game is a, is a fair, you know, three and a half, four hours. So don't get me wrong, you know, obviously the lads that we've got, were, you know, they're very successful coming through the various leagues that we've won. And, you know, we want to win games of football. So, you know, clearly we'll be making every effort to go there. But you know, the point I was just trying to make is, you know, the priority is to, try and stabilise ourselves at this level, um, which at the halfway point in the season we've done. But certainly, you know, 10, 10 games to go. If we're in the mix, we'll be giving it as good a shot as the next person to try and get in there. But it is one of those leagues. We don't get carried away. We could quite easily lose to Tottenham, Bristol, Manor Farm, you know, and Limington, um, mm-hmm. because there isn't a lot between the teams, in my opinion. I think that shows that as well, Stu, from last year when you look at Bristol Manor Farm in the playoffs last year and this year, yeah. like only 20th. And I think that probably just sort of proves the point of what you just said that, you know, I think every single league, it's just like you win one game and you shoot into the playoffs, you lose one game and you shoot sort of down almost mid table to, if the, you know, if the results going the wrong way. So it is, a, as you say, a difficult, especially when you look at Sholin, you know, at the minute, you know, they're what, six, uh, well, 10 points clear. But of course, Tottenham have got two games in hand on them underneath, so it's still really close. Yeah, I mean, we haven't played Sholin. I mean, we went to Tottenham, and you know, on the day they it was it was kind of men against boys, and you know, Jimmy, the manager, had a drink with him afterwards, and you know, he's a really good guy, and I thought they were excellent. You know, you know, excellent in every way. You know how they played, how they moved the ball, the facilities, and you know, they're certainly geared up to you know be playing in certainly a couple of leagues higher than they are now. Um, but, you know, we haven't played Cholin and, um, you know, obviously they're, they're at the top of the league and they're there to be caught. But I certainly think Tottenham will run them very close and, you know, you know, might possibly pip them. So what's, what's the travelling like for Wimbledon from, from where you are for the weekend? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a fair old track, but they all are. It's just something we accept. Um, you know, obviously, when clubs come down to us, they're like, "Oh, it's a bit of a track, this sort of thing." And um, but you know, we're having to do that every other week. But you know, we've you know, we've gone through the levels locally, and you know, we're just all delighted to have got to this level. And you know, we we just want to you know work hard and and like you know, like I said, survive in the league, and then you know, look look to try and push on if we can. So what's the what? So people that don't know, you know. 
Tavistock and, and where you're situated. I mean, tell everybody whereabouts Tavistock are and what is the, the local club to you? What would be sort of like your local derby? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, when I took over the club, they were in um, the Peninsula League, which is step six. Um, and, um, you know, the, the local town, the, you know, the local clubs of derbies back then were like your likes of Callington, Launceston, um, the two nearest clubs. And then obviously, as we went into the Western League, um, you know, Tavistock's about 12 miles outside of Plymouth. So um, Plymouth Parkway, we had a similar journey with them, really, that um, they were in the Western League together um, over the two seasons. Um, they went up on the points per game rule, um, although we were top after like 28 games, I believe it was. And then, then the next season we won that we obviously won it um, to come on up. So you know, Tavistock sort of like a, a market town. Um, like I said, sort of like 25 minutes from Plymouth. Um, you know, the nearest professional club is Argyle, um, but it, it it is quite a small town. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a football town. It's probably it probably more supports the rugby, but you know the crowds have grown and um, you know our average attendance is about 200, which you know in comparison to some of the um, clubs in this league is quite small. But you know we like to think that you know as we get more successful and as we continue to grow, then obviously the crowd, but the crowd and the fan base will increase. Mm, no, absolutely. Well, listen, Stu, I really appreciate you giving up your time this morning to come and talk to us about the weekend. We wish you all the very, very best for the weekend. Hopefully it goes your way at the weekend and, uh, and so hopefully we will speak to you again very, very soon. Yeah. Top man. Thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Stu. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Bye. 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 Joining us now, of course, is the uh, Wimbledon manager, Tim Sills and Tim, it's great to see you, mate. And, uh, just like Stu, it looks like another uh, another interview with Harry Redner. <laughs> well, the transfer window is open, so um, yeah, I've just uh, picked up uh, picked up. Um, oh, what was his what, <laughs> what was his name? The bloke who travelled to the training ground and then didn't get signed. Oh, I know the one that was some time ago. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah that's it exactly. So it's a bit it's a bit like that, but. Um, but yeah, just always in the car, just in case someone rings and needs uh, a paper <laughs> sign. <laughs> so, I mean, the game of the weekend against uh, Tavistock, I mean, you know, looking back at it earlier on when we were speaking to Stu, you know, I mean, you know, you came out, uh, the winner is, you know, by the one goal out of three the last time you played. So, I mean, you're sitting nicely in the in, in those sort of playoff areas. I mean, are you looking forward to the game start? And, and, and what, what you know, what are you expecting? Yeah, but, you know, very much looking forward to it. You know, we were... You know, pretty well prepped before we went down there last time. Um, knew that they were, you know, a very handy side. Obviously, the league table didn't lie. I think they were third at the time. Um, and it was kind of really for us our, our kind of big statement of the run that we were starting to put together, um, going down there and, and getting a result against, yeah, a very, very good side. Um, and it kind of really gave us a bit more belief, to be fair. And so coming up against them now, you know, we're, we're in – no, you know, there's no disillusion in terms of the, the task ahead. Um, you know, they obviously had a bit of a, a patch, you know, a sticky patch just before Christmas. Um, but they seem to have come through that pretty well. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's always nice to look forward to a home game. It would be nice to look forward to any sort of game at the moment. Um, but, you know, especially uh, one where, you know, you've got two sides that play a decent standard of football and, um, you know, should be good for the neutrals as, as well as obviously for, for the supporters who are there on the day. How, I mean, how difficult to is it though? You know, because you know, looking at your fixtures, it's been what three weeks. Well, it will be come Saturday by the time you've played a game. How difficult is that? You know, when you're on a, you know, a decent run like you were on. I mean, I'm looking right back, and you know, three three against Westbury, and then going back there. You know, I think the last time you actually did, didn't win a game was the 15th of October. So I mean, it's, it's a it's a good old run there of a, a decent run. How difficult is that when you know you've got a, a decent side in Tavistock coming coming to you, and you've not played for three weeks. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it is tricky. It's it's hard to replicate, you know, games in, in training in any sort. I mean, we had a behind closed doors friendly last week to, to try and get that real match fitness um, into the boys and, and keep them, you know, at the, at the standards we expect in terms of their fitness. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's almost like you've got to go again. You've got to build yourselves up and, and, and be ready to go again. But it's the nature of the beast in this country. You know, we're, we're all well versed in it. Um, I'm sure we've all been through it many times before. So, 
it's it's better to have been on a good run and then have a break than I think to to be on a bad run and then kind of have that hanging over you. Um, so yeah, we're you know more than prepared and and more than looking forward to hopefully picking up where we left off. I mean, I mean, fitness wise in the squad, everybody okay, or have you still got a few out? Um, well, a couple of long termers um, that you know won't be back for for a few weeks yet. Um, other than that, I think we are looking all right again. You know, having this spell um you know does give you a chance to get rid of a few little niggles and you know um recurring injuries so yeah you know we'll be pretty much back to to full strength i think other than the uh couple of long termers mm. i mean with it though i mean doing well i mean are you going to be doing a, a, a mr arteta and bringing a couple as you're going so well or are you, you are you quite happy with where you're doing um, well, I'll be staying in my technical area a little bit more than he does. Um, from the looks of it yesterday, it was embarrassing. I can only imagine what yeah the Southern League would say if, if that was one of us. Um, but but yeah, you know, I, you're always looking to to improve. You're always looking for the, the players you've got to improve. So, um, you know, sometimes it's good to freshen things up. There's nothing, um, you know, imminent in terms of squad changes coming up because we, we have full trust in the boys that are there as well. But we understand, you know, that in terms of, keeping things fresh and going into what is a promotion running that, you know, we've set ourselves up for. Sometimes you do need uh, a fresh pair of legs or, you know, um, a little bit of cover in certain areas. So, you know, we're always kind of looking around, but without being kind of desperate to add to it. Mm. And of course, you and uh, I'm assuming one of your local rivals as well in uh, in Hamburg, we're doing quite well sort of sitting in that, uh, in those playoffs. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Having obviously left Hamworthy in, in October, um, and leaving them with the squad they had, you know, we were confident that we'd we, if we'd stayed there, we'd have got playoffs. So yeah, it doesn't doesn't surprise me they're doing so well. You know, there's a fantastic bunch of players there as well. So um, it's great, you know, locally obviously to to have that Totten not too far away from us, you know, um, in terms of uh, locality. But you know, they're doing very well as well as our Bashley. So you know, there's a lot of uh, competitive teams even in our local area within the league. So um, it definitely makes for some uh, interesting games in the running. I mean, Sholin sort of sitting there on the top and doing, you know, extremely well. I mean, are they the team to beat, do you think, in the league? Yeah, I think when you look at it, Sholin and Totten, um, you know, with the momentum they've got, we've, we've built that momentum up without having it at the at the early start of the at the early parts of the season. Um, but I think those two are, are definitely setting the standards. Sholin, you know, it is funny. Everyone talks at the start of the season about, oh, yeah, they started well last year, but they tailed off. It doesn't mean it's going to happen again. And they've showed that. They've showed they've got that consistency even when, you know, they've had some adversity with going down to 10 men and having games called off themselves, they've, they've kept that consistency going and fair play to them. So they're definitely the ones to catch. I don't think Totten are too far off that either. I see they've made another couple of signings today, which, um, you know, they've got a, a lot of strength and depth, shall we say. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, they're, they're setting the standards that we're all trying to, trying to catch. Was that game on the 10th of April the one you were looking looking at? No, you know, leaving Hamworthy to go to to Wimborne. Is that the one you're looking forward to to go there again? Um, well, we had them Boxing Day, and it was it was a relief to get out of the way. I think again, <laughs> you know, there's a there's a there's a big build up. Um, you know, the, you know, there's a lot of eyes on you, and um, we were never gonna rub it in their faces in victory. But I, I knew that it would, you know, there'd be a lot coming back on me in defeat. So, you know, it was good to get out of the way and it was nice to get the three points. And of course, it may well have a lot more on it than just, you know, me going back to Hamworthy um, at that stage. So, you know, uh, there's some really big games coming up. Uh, there's a lot of games coming up. So uh, it's hard to look too much further ahead than um, than this Saturday. And is that, is that the thing that, we, you know, with this, this Saturday's game and then after that, of course, as you said, we, we're we not playing for three weeks and you just never know what weather's coming around the corner. You, you end up this sort of time of the season being sort of sort of really busy and, and playing sort of almost sort of like Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. I mean, do you prefer playing that? Because I know I've spoken to people in the, in the Central and, and they've turned around and said, we haven't had that many Saturday, uh, sorry, midweek games at all. We, we can't get a rhythm going of games because you're playing Saturday, Saturday, Saturday all the time. So yeah. are you one of those managers who prefers the Saturday, Tuesday or do you prefer just going on, on you know, at the weekends? Yeah, I think you know it's it's been a weird one this season with the smaller league. I think last year in the, in the Wessex League we had a lot of Tuesday nights. I think the league above has a lot of Tuesday nights. Um, whereas we're just one of those strange ones. You're right; it is just kind of been Saturdays with the odd Tuesday sprinkled in. But uh, I think as a player, I always liked Tuesday night. Um, I think as a manager, it's the same. I wouldn't want them every week, of course. But um, but yeah, you know the fact that we've got a few coming up. 
um, certainly doesn't hold any fear and um, certainly means that we don't have to plan as many training sessions, which is always a relief as well. Mm. And you get these three games, you know, you've got this, as you say, it's going to be a tough old game against, you know, against Tavistock. And then you've got Evesham after that. You've got Bashley as well, as you said. I mean, it's a real tough sort of little run for you. Yeah, that's it. And we, you know, we knew it was coming at some point. Um, you know, we've had a, a couple of little tough runs before um, and dealt with it well. So, you know, we've, we're full faith in, in our ability to, to be able to deal with that. Um, so, yeah, they're the games that you want to be involved in. They're all teams that are doing well. So, yeah, bring it on. I mean, with the game against Tavistock, I mean, you know, I, t- I take it you must have had gone out and had them sort of scouted or something, going to have a look at them, uh, you know, in, uh, in the last few weeks or, or maybe even yourself, maybe because you haven't had a game. I mean, how difficult is it for somebody, you know, at that, that sort of level of step four, you know, because you could go and go and sort of go and see how they play and then next week they sign two or three players and two or three players leave. Is it, is it difficult? And have you got to sort of really sort of, sort of knuckle down and go and see him maybe two or three times, maybe even the week before, just to make sure that you're getting the information correct? It is difficult, especially at this level. It's expensive, um, you know, to keep going and, and watching teams in the first instance. Um, obviously, you know, there are so many other things that, that dictate the way that a team plays on a certain day in terms of the pitch and availability and suspensions and all that as well. So, you, yeah, you kind of have a rough idea as much as you can of, how people are going to set up, how they're going to play, um, but also be ready to be very flexible in terms of your approach to the game when, you know, things either change on the day or, like I say, you turn up and either the pitch might be, you know, an absolute carpet or it, or it might be, you know, a cow field. So you have to be, uh, yeah, ready for all sorts of eventualities, but do your homework as, as best you can. I mean, your, your surface, I mean, how good's the surface at Wimborne? It's really impressive. Yeah, I have to say last year there was... Um, I think last year was the first year it got a whole season played on it um, and it didn't hold up very well by all accounts uh, in terms of the the weather and, um, you know, cut up quite quickly. Whereas this year they spent a bit of money over it on it over the close season and um, it's held up really well. You know, we're protecting it as much as possible. The groundsmen are doing a, a fantastic job. So at the moment, yeah, it's, it's, it's looking really good, especially as we have our reserves playing on it as well. So uh, long may that continue because we do, try and get the ball down as much as possible. But like I say, you know, we're also flexible to, to play in different ways as well. So are you a grass man or are you a free G man? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, having been at Hamworthy <laughs> for, for three years on a 3G and, you know, never ever really having a game called off. Um, and it's, you know, a potential massive money maker at this level for a club, um, being able to rent it out and getting that revenue in as well. Um, although we didn't have that at Hamworthy, but, um, yeah, you know, I did rate, I, I did really like that, but the purist in me as well does like the grass, um, but does like the grass to be, you know, in some sort of condition where you can actually play football on it. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a really tough one for me. I'm, I'm quite happy to turn up to a ground and see either. Um, but you know, when you turn up at Totten and see their pitch, which is absolutely immaculate, um, and you know, that, that's how football should be played. And, um, you know, yeah. So if it was like that every week, grass all the way. <laughs> well, listen, mate, we wish you all the very, very best at the weekend. We really do. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully you. you get the points that uh, that you require at the, uh, the weekend. And uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, if it goes OK and you're in those sort of uh, playoffs, and who knows, it could be you and uh, Hamworthy in the uh, playoff final, if neither of you actually oh, can't show yeah. That could be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> as, as long as it's at Wimbledon like yeah well yeah exactly that especially with their home record so yeah <laughs> listen mate I really appreciate you and we'll let you get off home and uh, a massive thank Brilliant. you for this afternoon and we say wish you all the best for the weekend thanks very much appreciate it oh, thanks Tim thanks mate cheers bye Bye-bye. and of course joining us now of course really lucky to say second week in a row um, that to get to speak to, to, to Paul of course manager at, at Truro and uh you know, the game last week ended up in, I suppose, in for both teams in a disappointing nil-nil draw. But I mean, this week, probably an even bigger game this week away to the league leaders, Western Supermare. I mean, how how you been preparing for, for that, and and have you been able to prepare for it because of the fact of the of all the bad weather? Well, we'll prepare for it the same way as any other game, mate. Um, it's uh, I, I've prepared for it, but. By going to watch Western v Hendon last night, but it got called off five minutes before. <laughs> so, uh, that, yeah, that was a wasted trip. But um, you know, it's, it, I don't think I would have I would have learned much about Western that I don't already know anyway. They're um, 
you know, they've got some terrific players and they're on, you know, they're on a hell of a run of form at the minute. So obviously we're in for a tough game. We know that, um, you know, but on our, on our day, we can give anyone a game and we just got to make, go there and give a good account of ourselves and what will be, will be, but one to no illusions. It's, it's, you know, it's the toughest game you can get away at the league leaders who, like I say, are in a phenomenal run of form. So, Would you settle for the same as that was last year, 2-2? Two, two? I, I mean... I mean, we're 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 four or five points behind them, and they've got two games in hand. So, does a draw really do anything? Probably not. But you know, it's um, it's it's too early. I mean, people are saying title decided and all that, which is a couple of things massively disrespectful to to Chesham, who are, who are right in there with us and Western, and you know the teams behind who are in good run of form as well. And also, it's it's the end of January. Mm. No, no one wins a league in January. So whoever wins. Um, on Saturday, they haven't won the league and they haven't lost the league if they lose. So it's listen. It's just about it's just about being another game mate. Going there, doing is doing what we can do, and hopefully that's good enough. If it ain't, it's not. You know, it, that's that's football at the end of the day. Is I, I say it all the time, and it's we'll go there and we'll, we'll win, lose or draw. There's no other options. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's as simple as that. But one thing's for sure: we'll go there, and we'll, we'll be brave and give it a go. Absolutely. I mean, again, I mean, it's a Saturday game, but I mean, I bet you're grateful it's a Saturday game and you to get to get to Western. So, I mean, I mean, how long is that going to take to get there? To be honest with you, uh, David, Western's one of the closer ones for us. So it's not, it's not a million miles away. Um, should be back in time for match of the day on Saturday night for a change. <laughs> it's not, it's not a million miles away. But I mean, the good thing with it being Saturday is hopefully, I mean, the weather's getting a lot warmer, isn't it? So we'll definitely be on. Um, Western's pitch is great as well, so it's a good place to play football. I'm sure there'll be a big crowd, so it's uh, it's all set up for a good game, mate. So you set up early to get down to the beach first. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> weirdly, we we played them last year. Uh, I think it was New Year's Day, and we drew to all. But before the game was there too early, and I hate getting to the ground too early. So we did go to the seafront before the game. We had a little walk along the beach and. We was looking for somewhere for an ice cream, but it was all shut on New Year's Day. But um, <laughs> that's that's actually that's actually a true story. I hate getting to the ground early, so we did have a little walk along the beach. But um, now nah, this year we'll try and um, try and get our timings right and get there as normal. So I mean, with it though, I mean, you win the game, you will go what a point behind. I know they had two games in hand, but do, do you look at also look at it? You know, look at that league table. You know, I just I just had it up in front of me. You know, literally with that sort of league table, you know, they're a minute four behind, but you the, the goal difference is quite big as well. So is, is that vital as well because of the fact that, you know, does that be an, is that, do you see that as an extra point is what I'm trying to say, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that, that's going to take some, that's going to take some catching. Um, I think what's happened is we, we was on a tremendous run of form. Um and now we're in a bit of a sticky patch and Western have hit a tremendous run of form. You know, they're winning games comfortably, you know. So obviously, you know, we're, we're under no illusions. We're in for a tough afternoon, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the, the goal difference is one million percent an extra point, especially when it's as big as it is. Um, you know, they score heavy, Western. They've got a lot of attacking threat. You know, Ruben Reed and Jackson and, and, and Grubb and uh, Bastin. I mean, that's their front four. <laughs> They've also got Scott Laird, who I played with at, at Plymouth. From left back, who's in double figures again this year, so it's phenomenal. They 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 do score heavy, so you know we'll have to defend well first and foremost to get anything out of the game. Do you get any help from Plymouth uh, pathway with the fact that they only played them sort of like the well the last home game? I mean, of the you know do, do the sort of clubs sharing the same ground? Is he, do they sort of share a bit of info with you or a bit of footage? I think I think there is certain managers who, who talk to each other in the league, absolutely, um, but. Uh, Western Superman have got, a, you know, they've got a set way of playing, and and which you know, Scott knows people know that, and he, but he's got good players, and he'll know how Churro play, you know. Um, so I think both teams know each other relatively well, and like I say, I know I know most of the players at Western. Um, the the biggest thing for Western is that they got a ton of experience, you know, they've got Scott Laird. Uh, Del Grubb, Ruben Reed, these these boys, you know, like Laird, Laird and Ruben Reed have all played in the football league for years, been there and done it. You know, they got promotions in the football league, let alone in the, the Southern League. So their experience is, is terrific, and I'm sure that helps them an awful lot. But you know, they got a lot of 
very technical players. Um, they move the ball really, really well. And as I said, they're a massive threat going forward. So, um, you know, and they've got the, you know, they've conceded the least goals in the league. So, you know, they're doing something right. People, I've just pulled up there, you know, as you said, quite fight the amount of goals they score. I mean, I've just, I've literally pulled it up. There's, there's threes, there's sevens, there's fours. Do you know what I mean? And, and not just one or two fours. It's like, you know, he's even a five in the last game. And you look through it, it's like, it's, it's incredible the amount of goals they score. Yeah, they do. I mean, they're pretty relentless going forward. Um, you know, they've got a set way of playing and they stick to it um, and it's to be admired. And like I said, they're a fantastic football team. Um, you know, but hopefully they don't score four or five on Saturday. You know, it's just, it's a case of, listen, just go in there, doing what we can do. We're, we're on 52 points, second in the league. Any other season at this stage, we'd be comfortably top of the league, no problem. But Western Supermare are a runaway train at the minute and, you know, someone's got to try and stop them, and we'll try our best on Saturday. I mean, I know you're not going to you're not going to divulge it on here, but I mean, you know how 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 do you stop them? You know, you know because in that situation, maybe some teams would look at that and go, "Well, look, they're smashing goals in. Let's just go up there and try and keep the score down, type thing." But you can't necessarily do that because you want to win that game to you know to to push forward and try and try and get automatic. So, you know, as you've just said, they've got a really good defense. They've got a really superb you know attacking line. You know, so. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to be sort of, I suppose, experienced and a bit savvy on how to, you know, how to sort of take the take them on. Yeah, I mean, well, we played them earlier in the season at our place and drew nil nil, so um, we stopped them scoring on that night. Um, you know, first half I think they had the better of us, and second half we had the better of them. So it's two evenly matched teams. I mean, we, I mean, we score heavy ourselves. We've scored an awful lot of goals as well. Um, but like I said, Western at the minute are having a not a freak season, but you know that they're, they're flying away with it, and you know they're they're dominating every area at the minute. Um, and ultimately, David, if they if they keep that going, fair play to them. I'll be the first one to shake their hands, you know. And it's up to us to try and stop them and every other team as well, because you know it's uh, that's that's they're they're setting the standards at the minute in the league, and we've got to try and get to those standards as well. Mm. So, can you put your finger on the, sort of the, as you just said, like the the sort of sticky period that you've had? Because, I mean, you, you know, look back and on the, literally on the page I've got, you know, 2-1 at home, you know, win against Haribo, and then a 1-1 and a 1-0 defeat, 3-3, 3-2, 2-2. You seem to be scoring the goals, but all of a sudden you've just let a few in. Yeah, so Saturday against Murphy was our first clean sheet for a while, which was which was pleasing earlier on in the season. Uh, I think was the first 13 games we had eight clean sheets. So, Obviously, it, it's not rocket science to see that we've stopped, stopped keeping clean sheets. Um, you know, so we need to go back to basics a little bit on that in training, which we did the week before. And it's no coincidence we got nil nil on Saturday. So, um, I mean, also what I would say in, in, in it's very easy in football to say, to say like we're conceding goals. And we have been. Um, obviously, a couple, there's been some individual error, which, you know, is 90% of goals you concede will be an error. Um, we've also had three goals scored against us from outside the box, which have been like wonder strikes, which sometimes you've got to hold your hands up and just say, you know, it is what it is. You can't stop them. So I think football, um, you make you make your own luck. And early on in the season, we won nine on the spin and we were undefeated for 17. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, I remember a couple of times opposition teams hitting the bar, hitting the post and, and you ride your luck occasionally. Um you know, in, in this little spell, it's hitting the bar and going in, hitting the post and going in. And that's football, mate. It, it, it goes like that. It's, it's so many ups and downs in a season. And it's it's just staying calm. Listen, been in football all my life. And it's it's just being calm with it, not getting not getting angry, not getting down about it. it. It is what it is. And luck will change eventually. And, you know, it's um, but like I say, we've got 18 games to go. And I'm sat here talking like our, our luck's all gone out the window. We're second in the league after 24 games. So, you know, and... And also, like not playing in our own ground and not having many fans at our games and stuff is is supremely difficult. But we're, we're trying to get promoted playing forty two away games, you know, which is before the start of the season. People say it's it's impossible. So in many ways, we're punching above our weight. So you know, we just my boys will give everything they've got right through to the last second. And if we win the game, great. If we lose a game. I would never point the finger at my boys through lack of effort. So they're a great bunch of lads, and we're looking forward to Saturday. It's 
it's the sort of games you want to play in. You want to go away to top in the league. You want there to be over a thousand people. You want the pitch to be great, and you want to have a bit of pressure on you. That's 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 what you're in football for. So, you know, we're looking forward to it. Mm. So, once there's one final question for you, away from the game on the weekend, what is the, the situation with Truro getting back to, you know, back to your sort of home area? I mean, is, yeah. it, is that on the cards? Is it gonna gonna happen? Yeah, I mean, it's all systems go. So, last night there was a big. Um, unveiling is that a word unveiling of the the, the the new ground the designs the architects were there there was a um a big community gathering in truro uh there was over 200 people there um looking through the new plans for the for the stadium it's uh it's in the planning stages now which um you know it, it will get through that and, and building is starting imminently um which is really really exciting you know it's for us to be Cornwall's premier team, but to play in Devon is 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 criminal, really. You know, it's through no fault of the club. It's through no fault of anyone. It, it is what it is. But we've got to get back to Cornwall. Um, at times this year, you know, in my first season when we was playing in Truro, um, we were top of the league uh, before COVID hit. Um, I think we played 30-odd games, whatever, and, and COVID hit. Um, and we were averaging 750 people. Uh you know, at the minute we're averaging a hundred people. So, mm. a prime example would be Saturday's game against Merthyr. You're nil nil with twenty minutes to go. If you've got seven hundred and fifty people cheering you on, it may. I'm not saying it would have. It may take you over the edge and get you a, that extra little five percent that gets you a goal. Mm. So it's um, you know, it's imperative we get back there. It's, you know, I'm from Plymouth and we're playing in Plymouth, but I would much rather be uh, managing Truro and Truro a hundred percent. Um, and, and and it is happening. Um, you know, I get asked the question an awful lot, but the the unveiling last night of the council and everyone, you know, working in the same direction, people are working tremendously hard on it and it will get built um, and it'll be built sooner rather than later. Which is fantastic news for everybody who's a true row fan. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's the best news we could have. It's mm. the best. Absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Paul, thank you very much indeed for talking no, to us. Welcome. You know, taking taking time out of your busy week, the second week in a row. And uh, but massive thank you for that. And we really do, do appreciate it. And uh, we'll speak to you very, very soon. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Well, a massive thank you to, of course, to Tim, to Stu, and to Paul. And uh, hopefully they get the points they want at the weekend. A massive thank you to you guys for watching. Um, there's a big surprise coming up. And uh, coming up very very shortly about a brand new show that's going to be coming on the southern league youtube channel stay tuned for that but a massive thank you again for everybody that watches please subscribe to the channel please make sure you let everybody else know we're here every week with as many shows as we can for your entertainment and to support every single one of all of you 80 odd teams in the southern league and of course also to all your fans and everything else all we want to do on this channel is promote you as non-league sides and get you as many people through the gate as we possibly can so from me and from everybody that's been on the show a massive thank you tonight and we'll see you all again next week <laughs>